I'm here with Dan from ChemCube and uh, we're going to learn a little bit about the printers that they have. It's not just ink on paper, it's all sorts of interesting inks that can turn into different materials. So uh, let's check it out. What do you have for us today? Well, we're, we're ChemCubed and we ma we're mainly a materials company. So we make the inks and materials for different applications. Our Electrojet brand materials are basically for additive manufacturing of electronics, where we're actually creating PCB boards and flexible substrates, flexible hybrid substrates, such as the flex on Kapton, where you're quite flexible. So what kind of material is being printed onto this Kapton tape? Our flagship material is a particle-free silver ink. They're extremely conductive, where a normal silver particle ink would have a bunch of fillers in it, and you'd have to have maybe about 30 layers of silver to be put on to equal two or three layers of ours. How conductive is that compared to like a, a if you had a thin layer of like pure silver? It's nearly the same. And the other advantage is that we center awfully quick. So we can go on not only on a capped on substrate, but also a PET that ha that's very low temperature and will deform at low temperatures. Here, we can actually print on this cheaper, low temperature substrates. But it, it's quite flexible in many ways because of the inks themselves with the low um, centering silver ink. Right, and because you can print a thinner layer to get the same conductivity, that also helps with the flexibility, it seems. It helps with the flexibility. The inks themselves have about 17% elongation. But in order to sell the inks, we also have a printer set. So this is our introductory printer here. It's print, as you can see, it's printing right now. And the printer itself has eight channels. So we can put eight different materials. So not only silver ink, but dielectrics. And the way that it works is that you have the silver printed on the substrate like you just saw. And then you can print dielectrics and make a multi-layer, multifunctional board. So you could actually, when you print your dielectric, you can have vias within the dielectric to connect the upper layers to the lower layers. And you can actually print silver right into the vias so you can plate the vias and, and have a fully functional board. Yeah, that's almost unheard of to see a multi-layer PCB being printed in one go with one machine. It's easy and one operator can run about two or three of these printers. Normally a subtractive PCB board, whether it's a flex board or not, um, even the flex boards, they have copper coating on it. And what they normally would have to do to create the board is to etch the copper chemically. Right. So when you're etching the copper chemically, for every square meter of copper that's getting etched, you contaminate about 4,000 gallons of water. And then that water's got to get scrubbed. If you're doing multi-layer boards, you've got to laminate these each on top of each other, which is a lot of hands-on work. We're taking all of that out of there. All right, so what kind of applications and customers do you have uh, with this kind of product? The applications are all over it. Wearables, IoT devices, many more, anything yeah. that ends in anything electronic. Anything you need to be small and flexible. Anything that's small or flexible, but also bigger. We're really shooting for real manufacturing, not just prototyping, not just rapid prototyping, but doing real manufacturing. So is there anything preventing you from running a traditional material like an FR4? Um, fiber board? Well, that's a good question because here we do. Okay. We've got FR4 board right there. So you can run on rigid substrates, flex substrates, glass, IoT covered glass, PET, oh, on glass? polycarb. That's really neat. Yeah. So you can put circuitry right on glass. So if you think about pressure sensitive glass where, the, where you need connections, you can also do that. But wow. And is that just finished? We just started that and it's already right. done? It started during the interview and it just finished during the interview. Sometimes, you know, when you print something out, you need to wait for the ink to dry. Do you have to do kind of the same thing here or is it pretty much ready to go right away? The silver takes about five minutes, four to five minutes to actually finish centering on the board. The layer to layer stacking, there's some time between the layer to layer. Traditional particle inks that might be trying to do this have you know up to an hour of post-centering. Yeah, well, when I get a PCB design and I want to have it made, it usually takes several days because I have to farm that out to somebody else. I just don't have the, all the equipment to be able to make those. But with this, you can just have one small machine that's able to produce pretty much finished products. So we'll be waiting for your order since, you, um, since it takes you a couple of days. You know this one's going to be quick, so right, we'll, yeah. we'll sign you up. I'll put an order in. <laughs> put an order in right now. So I noticed that uh, these parts look pretty similar to parts that you would have made with a normal PCB manufacturing process. Right. Um, are there any differences in like the minimum feature size and the pitch and the spacing between features? Um, yeah, everybody always struggles with that. And so, um, so that's a good point. This printer right now um, will do about 100 micron with a 300 micron pitch. So 100 micron trace with three, um, 300 micron pitch, leaving a 200 micron 
spacing in between. We're comfortable with that. It could do a lot better than that, not to oversell the printer. That's what we shoot for. So is it mostly the chemistry that you have to have a good understanding of? Yeah, this is all about chemistry and materials. We like our systems, obviously, but we also work with a lot of OEMs and a lot of printer manufacturers. There's another aerosol jet type systems that our inks work in as well. That's a, something called IDS, oh, wow. which is an aerosol, so it gets very, very fine lines down to 10 microns or 20 microns. It looks like there's about 10 traces in a little over a millimeter of spacing. Yeah, the, it's significant in that way. Also, the, 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 the idea of an aerosol jet is it could go on conformal surfaces, where inkjet, you're pretty flat. It's the right tool for the right job, depending on what you want to do. Well, thanks for showing me around the booth. It's been wonderful to learn about the Electrojet. And Thank you very technology. much. Um, if you want to learn more about this technology, we can uh, link you to their website.